Matteo Collina and this is a Node.js Bootcamp webinar series. Today we are going to talk about Node.js streams. Uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, I am a senior software architect at Nearform and I'm also a member of the uh, stream working group within Node.Core. Uh, yes, I help maintaining streams. And uh, I've been playing around with Node since version 0.4 and been around for near, at Nearform for the last two and a half years. And yeah, uh, together with me there is David Gonzalez. Hello. David. Yes, hello, I'm David Gonzalez. Uh, I've written a book uh, called Microservices in Node.js, actually developing microservices in Node.js. I've joined Nearform nearly a month ago and I've done some open source as well. Um, I contributed to Python a few years ago and some Node.js uh, open source project related to Nearform as well. So that's me, Mateo, please. So um, the Node.js Bootcamp series, webinar series, help you um, learning the basics of Node.js and how to build solid and scalable Node.js applications. Uh, so there is other, we have did some webinars that are more to follow, so follow up on our social accounts for new webinars. So uh, who are we? We are a Node.js consultancy company. We do, um, uh, we do uh, co-development. We help you uh, develop Node.js uh, applications. We uh, do architecture review. We are also experts on Node.js performance. We have several people working on Node Core. If you have any issues on that area, um, and basically we can de-risk uh, uh, your Node.js development efforts. Let's so let's do a little bit of housekeeping before starting. So this session is 40 minutes. We are in a 30 minute slot, which is our presentation. After that, we'll have a 10 minute of Q&A, but you need to submit your question via GoToWebinar or via Twitter using the hashtag ask near from account or and tweeting at me and uh, David uh, Twitter account please write those down because probably uh, I'm turning Islam very soon okay and you probably have my Twitter account Twitter account anyway but you know and definitely near for one so um, let's start uh, with what is a stream and uh, apart from this nice picture okay of a waterfall but uh, basically a stream, let's imagine uh, water flowing. Water usually flows from uh, one place to another and when it flows we call the, the place from where the, uh, the water originates uh, upstream and when it goes downstream. So Node.js streams are very much like water. But first, let's go a very, a completely different um, definition of streams, which, which was done by Judge Smith and in fact it consider uh, a stream as an array laid out in time rather than in memory. What does this mean? If you consider an array, um, an array is uh, it's represented in memory as consecutive bytes and uh, as consecutive areas of memories and basically you can get all the data in, you can see all the data all the time in memory. But a stream, you can consider it as a single cell of that array, a single cell, where the data, instead of having, um, in, instead of having to move the index to process it, is, it changes on that single cell over time. That is, um, that is a stream. I hope all of this is clear, but it will be probably more in a moment. So a stream is not really useful by itself. A stream is useful because you can concatenate multiple streams through this interface. And you have probably seen this pipe thingy where you have a stream, you pipe it somewhere, and you pipe it somewhere else. And if you have used, for example, Gulp, Gulp is built on, the, is built on this concept. Um, in fact, streams are built over uh, the, um, the pipe concept of Unix. A lot of Node.js borrows from uh, the, Unix, the Unix origin. And in, in Unix, you could write something like this, equal, low, pipe, sad, and a nice regular expression. I know all of you are very expert on regular expression, so I, I'm not going to explain this to you what it is. Uh, but, you know, if not, 
look it up. And you can redirect things to uh, the output. Now, we can do the same thing with Node using streams. Uh, in fact, streams are a way um, uh, to, are a way to uh, to design system based on the concept of flowing data. And streams define a very simple, a very uh, define a common interface between uh, between various components. So we can have a lot of uh, little. Uh, uh, modules based on little modules in open source and we can use all together between themselves because they use this common API called streams to represent an array over time and you can use you can use them as well to build uh, very nice and effective applications so um, okay so before uh, going through um, before having an example, let's recap how Node.js work. So Node.js is based on the concept called the event loop. Node.js is single threaded. So um, when some JavaScript executed, it's executing, nothing else is happening on, uh, on the process. What is happening is that your JavaScript will schedule some uh, um, input output to happen. And when that input output happen uh, over here, it will go into this nice event queue and from the event queue, it will, some more JavaScript will be executed. So when, even if you're talking about streams and data in data that is changing and flowing all the time, in fact, when the stream is executing, that data is not changing, okay? This is important to keep in mind when, while we are doing things. So uh, I think uh, Dave uh, has a nice example for you. Oh, uh, so Dave. What are the types yes. of stream? So I'm going to put it down. Now. You, let me give you the presenter. Here you go. Perfect. So you can see my screen now. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to tell to you about the type of streams in Node.js. As you can see, we have put in here um, a picture of the, Node, the Flux Capacitator from Back to the Future, which probably all of you have recognized already. So in Node.js, we have four types of, of streams. As you can see in the right side of this slide, we have readable, writable, duplex, and transform. Um, the box below the name of the stream type, it's the method that is going to be operated when the stream it's articulated. So I'm going to go exactly one by one explaining what it is. Um, the first one is the readable stream. As the name says, um, it's a stream used to read things. So for example, um, the standard input is a readable stream, which it will do other, no other thing than just getting data in chunks from an input source, which in this case will be the standard input, a file, a socket, anything. Um, in the right side of the slide, or here, you can see um, the signature that Mateo has shown before, which is readable.pipe writable. And that, that has a lot of meaning because the pipe method is only present on readable duplex and transform streams. And writable don't have the pipe method. So what this means is the data flows from a readable stream into a writable stream. Um, being a writable stream, the opposite to a readable stream. In this case, for example, the standard output, it's a good example of a writable stream. Um, it sends data in chunks to an output sync. In this case, it could be the terminal, or it could be a file, or something different. Um, now we move into the duplex streams, um, which is pretty much a type of stream which implements readable and writable. And that's pretty much it. Uh, for example, network sockets are usually uh, duplex streams because they can read and write at the same time. And that's supported by the network protocol TCP, which has the duplex uh, mode of working. So it's kind of a representation, an abstract representation of how the data flows in a network adapter. And there's another type of streams, which is transform. And as the name says, it's pretty much a duplex stream that manipulates the data that passes through um, this stream itself. One example is set leaf. I have prepared a simple and um, very easy to read um, example here. So what we do is we create one input stream from the file input.txt. This input stream, like input.txt, has just a single line with the hello world text. And then what we are going to do is we are going to pipe the input 
into the gzip transformation stream, which is here, um, that goes into the output stream, which is a gzip file. So now what we can do is we go in here, node and transform gzip, and that's done. As you can see, there's a new file in my editor, which is the zip file containing the input stream. Very simple and very easy to follow. Uh, it's very intuitive, as Mateo said. The API is shared across all the streams, so you can actually design thinking on streams pretty much every single data flow in your architecture. And there's another type of stream, which is really not a type itself, but it's a type of transform stream, and it's the pass-through stream. And this is very useful to hook up and to hook uh, for hooking non-stream events into a stream architecture. So if you have something that is not streamable, but you want to actually inject that data into a stream torrent, you can do it using this type of streams. Um, so another interesting uh, characteristic of the streams is the object mode. Um, all the streams in Node.js by default work uh, with the streams, the streams and buffers. Um, streams can be created in object mode, as you can see down below in the code snippet. We just need to pass to the constructor object mode, and we are using here a library called um, Fruitu, which we are going to talk about it later, but it's um, no other thing than a constructor wrapping the constructor of the streams. Um, and then now, if we run this example, console.log chunk will be assigned to this object that is passing here, and the type of will be an uh, object rather than a stream or buffer. So now we have one example. Um, this is probably my favorite example. So this URL, it's um, basically a list of all the NPM packages that we have um, in the NPM registry. Yeah. It's a very, very long file. As you can see, the scroll bar is never ending and still goes on. So we have two versions of the same program. One is using streams, and basically we get the content of this URL, and then we pipe that into STDO. And the, the other version is taking the content of this uh, URL, um, and then once it's loaded, we just output the body of um, the HTTP response. So I'm going to show you exactly how it works. Um, in order to show you that, I have this program, which is PM2. I'm running it in the monitor mode, so we're going to be able to see exactly the memory footprint and the CPU footprint of the two uh, programs. So let's run y streams, then y no streams. You are going to see them appearing here, and then there you go. You can see now the y no streams, which is the uh, no streams version. It's growing the memory out of control, whereas y streams is just keeping around the same footprint. And the CPU is about the same. It's a little higher on the streams, but it's actually because it's processing the data and all putting that into the terminal. So we can see this real time with no problem. That is finished now. So then we go David, back to the if you can put go back in the code uh, for a second. I just want to reply to a quick question that Gabriel made. Um, yes. If you in uh, um, if you go in the streaming version, um, yes. So this got dot stream returns what it is a readable, okay? And we pipe it to what it is a writable, which is process standard out. Just to clarify, where, from where the direction of the data flows. Yes, Thank it you. goes from, from the HTTP URL into the STD out. Yep. Okay. Okay, so... So now it's my turn. It's your turn, Matteo. I'm going to send you the presenter. Thank you. Um, all yours? Yeah, you should see it, right? You got yes. it, David. I so, see uh, three, so uh, we have three different versions of the Streams API, depending on which versions of Node you are using, and the modules you are you are using were written on, probably. So, version the first version of the Stream was born with version Node zero eight, and this version is software written targeting this version of stream can still run today on version uh, 6.4. So it's a very nice backward compatibility story. Uh, version, however, version, 
version one of the streams API were not really um, uh, working properly, so we got version two of the same API with version with node v0.10. And this was stable enough, it still had some issues, and we got version three of the stream API with node 0.12 and node four going forward. Let's go very quickly through the, all those um, uh, through all those APIs. So um, streams one were push streams. We're born with node 0 to 8, so which means that upstream was pushing data downstream as fast as, as it could. Which means that if downstream was slow, meaning it was doing some crypto or something else, all the data will probably be uh, floating up in the memory to be processed. Uh, which caused, well, what was available to developer of in Node.js 0.8 was a POSE method, which was posing the source. But that method was only advisory. So the, the, the stream could completely ignore it. Like the developer could say, oh, no, I'm not implementing it. And you want to know. So the POSE method was only advisory. Uh, this caused a lot of back pressure problems and stability problems for application using Node 0 .8 in production. That was a huge issue. Because of that, we got streams 2. Streams 2 are pull streams. Pull streams mean um, that uh, if the, it's downstream, the task upstream, if there is data. Um, we'll see more about back pressure in a very quick moment. Um, so, uh, Back pressure is managed automatically by the stream when using the pipe method, if you are using stream 2. And in order to do so, you use a new API called um, read the readable event and compile, uh, combine with the read method, as you've seen down, as you can see in the code example down there. In fact, with the stream will emit, will emit a readable event when there is some data to be read using the read method. Now, the red method can return null, and that means, oh, well, let's wait for some more data coming. And that will mean a readable uh, event. As you can see, the read method is synchronous, because you're reading data that is already there. And it's already available. However, with streams 2, that was not a, still not perfectly OK. And in fact, resume, pause, and data handler was re reverting the stream to uh, 0.8 mode streams one mode called the legacy mode which means oops um, you couldn't tell if a stream was in the previous mode on the uh, stream one or stream two and what behavior it was because of that we got stream three stream three is back pressure is fully managed on both cases and in fact if you are, you can even attach multiple uh, you can attach um, a, 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 a data producer upstream to multiple consumer downstream. And the data producer will go at the slowest speed of his consumers. Which means we can, um, even if you attach a data handler, uh, that will automatically start pulling itself himself, rather than moving it to flowing mode automatically. OK? So uh, I think uh, uh, David has some examples to show you about this. I'm going to use the presentation, David. Yes, um, so I'm going to show you exactly um, the happy case. Uh, you can see my screen right now, probably. Can you? Yes, 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 we can. OK, so this is a sample code. Um, don't try to run this on the examples, because this is just intended for showing how the streams work. This is what happens in the perfect world TM. So you get something as a stream. And then what happens is you pause the stream because you are not ready to process the data. And then after that, you go into some asynchronous operation, as Node.js is highly asynchronous and handling all the communication. And then once someone is replying to you, just attach the data handler and start processing data. And then this start processing, processing data happens when you call a stream.resume. So it will give you data, and the data will be showing up in the streams as it comes through. So now we're going to see with three examples, streams one, two, and three, and how it has evolved from the older versions of Node.js to the most recent ones. 
So on streams one, once you get the stream, the data might have been already in there. And as there is no any type of buffer or you know some sort of intermediary storage, the data might have been already been lost. So and as Mateo specified before, calling posts might have been ignored by the producer into this stream. So once you reach here, um, there's probably a potential data loss already. But there is something even um, more worrying is that um, if the, the consumer ignores the, the, the writer ignores the post, um, the data will be lost and no one will be able to recover that. So then um, you start manipulating the data, same thing to something asynchronous, add the data handler, and then call resume, which is also a piece advisory as well, because um, as you can guess, the writer does not need to be informed that he can write data because it's just purely intentional. Then streams to fix some of those problems. So for example, um, in this case, stream is paused by default. So the post method does nothing on pausing the stream, but it has some sort of a side effect, which is reverts the stream to into the stream one version. So instead of being a pull stream, it becomes into a push stream, um, which is bad because the data, it can be lost as well, and the post um, method can be ignored. So assuming that we haven't called the post um, method, we do something asynchronous, and then we attach the data handler, and then nothing happens. So we call the stream.resume, and the data starts flowing from the stream into our handler and gets processed and successfully processed. Very important to remember that once you attach the data handler, um, actually, that was wrong. Once you attach the data handler, the data starts flowing. Uh, but also, once you call the post method, um, it will it will happen the same. If the stream will revert into the streams one version, which could incur into potential data loss. Now, stream three, as Matteo said, it's not perfect, but it's quite good as what we need for working with the streams. So, by default, it's post, so you don't need to call post. But I'll, even though if you call it it will do nothing, it won't revert to streams one, or it won't do anything other than just post in the stream if it was wrong for some reason. And then do something asynchronous, and then once your callback kicks in, and the data handler is attached. There's something very interesting here, because once you attach the data handler, what happens is the stream resumes, resumes itself. You don't need to call resume, but there is no harm in doing it so, so it will have no effect. So the thing is, with a stream stream, you ensure that there is no data loss if you are listening to it, and it handles the back pressure internally. And so you don't need to worry about um, back pressure problems with stream stream as, as soon as um, you respect the API. And in a stream stream, if you follow the pipe, um, if you follow the pipe signature like the one we've seen here with the GCP event um, example, and there will be actually no problem with back pressure, but once you revert to streams one, you will have um, serious problems with back pressure. So now I'm sending the presenter back to Matteo. He's going to talk about what back pressure is because we've been talking about it, but we actually don't know exactly what it is. Matteo? Here we go. You should see. Um, whoop. Yes. You should see back my screen. So uh, it is a very graph, very nice graphical representation of the concept of back pressure. Uh, I would also want to thank Bob for doing the graphics. Thank Bob. So um, this uh, this diagram shows you uh, how back, what is how back pressure works. And again, it comes from the concept of water. You should really think as data flowing as 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 it is water. So water, um, you can, eat. if you put a little bit of, when you're flowing water, you put a little bit of buffer at the very top of your, um, uh, of your tube, you see that water comes in and it flows right to your glass. Now you see that the, the, entry, uh, the entry hole is larger than the exit hole, and in fact, it goes down. What this means is that if you, the maximum capacity on this side is lower than the maximum capacity on this other side. Uh, so this is higher than uh, the servers. This is lower and this is higher, okay? So what it means is what downstream we can process data not as fast as upstream is producing it. Which means that 
you know, we need to stop upstream and say, look, downstream can't, uh, can't handle, otherwise we, all the water will flow down. Uh, this, th this signal is called back pressure. Back pressure will tell, your up, will tell upstream to slow down. And in streams 3 and streams 2 as well, uh, what this happens uh, is there is a little buffer as part of the stream API. Basically, oh, sorry, what it, I don't know what, why it turned. Um, so what happens is that streams is, um, there is this nice buffer on the, on the left. This buffer will fill a little bit and the back pressure will be signaled to our um, to upstream only when that buffer is full. This happens via, and you can consider this as a transform stream, because a transform stream gets some data in and gets some data out. A writable or readable will just have a part of this, okay? In fact, when you have a large pipeline of, of things, what we have is something like this. So basically, a stream is producing data, then going to some other stream, there is some more buffering and some more buffering involved. So there is a lot of buffer to cope with temporary slowdowns in different parts of the system. This also means that if you have a pipeline doing a lot of processing, all the, the slowest part of that pipeline tells the, uh, the speed of the wall, uh, tells the flow and the speed of the wall uh, pipeline itself. So uh, let's go through uh, some popular libraries. Uh, it's uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm giving the, con the the presentation back to to David, and it will show you some of them. So we're going to talk about um, the more mainstream uh, libraries in um, oops in Node.js relating to streams. Um, so the first one is readable stream. So it's a mirror of the streams two and three into the node and uh, JS core. Um, what's happening with node is, um, as you probably know, is a fairly rapid evolving tech. So a few years ago, not so far, the version 0.4 didn't know too much about the streams, but now we are on the version 4.5. And it actually has evolved a lot. So what happens is companies that have adopted Node.js early, and the red ones, um, they don't have a really good API with streams, so someone has pulled the uh, core of streams two and three uh, into a library called readable stream, uh, which is pretty much a mirror of what's happening in the core of Node.js, so it can be used in other projects of other older versions of Node.js, but it also has a really, really good feature, which is it works in the browser as well, which it's amazing because it enables the um, UI code to use streams for pretty much everything. Um, the second one is end of a stream. Um, when I started looking into that library, I got shocked because um, I didn't think that detecting the end of a stream in Node.js or in any other language could be that problematic, but it actually is. And this library, what it does is it uniforms, it uniforms the API because um, readable stream and writable streams have different um, APIs for detecting the end of a stream. So with this library, what we do is pretty much require the library and then call on the library, which is a function, into the stream, and then we will get a call back once the stream is done or finished, and, and that's pretty much it. So we don't need to worry about um, all the mess of, you know, as you can see here, the readable stream um, is sending the, the event end, whereas the writable stream is sending the event finish. So it unifies the API for writable and readable. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send back the presenter to Mateo, which is gonna talk to you about um, few interesting other libraries. Matteo, all yours. Here we go. Uh, um, let's talk a little bit on um, about error handling before talking about the next um, very popular stream module. So um, uh, error handling the stream is a little bit problematic. And I have seen, uh, I have been beaten by this myself, I admit it. And I have seen a lot of application also being uh, having this problem. So when we have a stream, uh, every every uh, step of that of the pipeline uh, could emit an error. 
So you probably have been told in one of your um, programming courses that when there is an error uh, or an exception, depending on the language, you should probably go up and um, free all the resources that have been allocated. Because otherwise you can leak memory or you can uh, leak out of file, desc leak file descriptors or something else. Streams are exactly the same. And in fact, errors in streams are not being propag propagated through your pipe. So as you can see here, in order to handle properly the error, we need to handle, we need to specify a function for every uh, part of the pipeline. This behavior, in fact, can be automated by using a library called pump. In fact, you should not use pipe at all in your code, unless you know what you're doing. You should use pump. If you use pump, what you can do is you can know if A, B, or C, uh, you can know um, whenever A, B, or C ends, all, all the others will end as well, and your function will be called. So you can know when the pipeline ends and be sure that all the streams in the pipeline have been properly um, handled. And um, now uh, let's go a little bit through some other bit of mod some other modules. So uh, what we have is from two. We want to cover from two. Before calling from two, we need to check uh, my readable. Uh, we, need to, we need to see how we implement a readable. So in order to implement a readable, what you do is you implement a read method. But you also need to inherit from the readable interface, um, abstract class. So you implement uh, the, uh, you inherit from readable and you implement underscore read. As you see here with the prototype, okay, you attach the method to the property. Now you can do the same thing using ES6 classes. Uh, which are nicer to read, let's agree on that. Um, but on the other end, um, uh, from two, we can use also, we can also use from two. From two is re a really nice way of wrapping a function uh, and producing a stream out of it. And this logic is quite, uh, it's quite nice, basically segmenting the string based on the, based on the size. It's really simple to use, and I recommend it. It also implements destroy. We will see why destroy is important later on. But yeah, destroy is a big deal. Uh, the same thing can be said uh, of through two. And in fact, uh, of, uh, so the same thing can be said of transform. And with transform, you need to implement underscore transform method, as we have seen. And in edit from the transform absorb class. We can also do this with ES6 classes again. Oh, nice, Docker. Thank you, Docker. Um, and basically what you will do is uh, use the class syntax in ES6. Now, you can use ES6 only on Node V6, OK? So that's so that you know. However, we can also use through two. Through two is very nice. Because, again, we can use a single function to build a transfer stream. It is the same thing of what we have been doing in this slide, okay? We take this logic and we place it here. Same code. Uh, there is one more difference. Through two also gives us destroy, which transform doesn't have. Why transform doesn't have destroy? Because destroy is not part of core. That's a big problem. We'll talk about it in a moment, but so that you know about it. Uh, the, last, the last one is flash write stream. Flash write stream is the same concept of from to through to, but for um, writable streams. So you can specify a single function called write here uh, at the writer function. So yeah, that's where data is written. And you can also specify a flash function here when it is called because finish is emitted. Now, this module is really nice because it adds flash to the writable API and because the writable API doesn't have a flash. Be aware that transform has a flash instead because it's very needed in most cases when you're processing uh, 
um, when you are processing, uh, you are passing any product. So uh, before, uh, yep, uh, I'm passing the presenter to David, which will show you uh, the um, uh, summer modules and uh, a nice example. Indeed, so I'm going to show you the last module, which is called Speak True. Um, we introduced this module in this presentation um, because we think it's interesting, but also Matteo Colina, my colleague and co-presenter, is the one who created this module. Um, so, uh, as I said before, a stream um, on Node.js can work on strings or buffers. But what happens if we want to process a file line by line? So, Speak True comes to the rescue. So it's pretty much a transform stream, and uh, you can see in here that we are piping from a readable stream into a transfer stream, which is split two. And then once we attach the data listener, what we will be receiving instead of chunks of data, we will be receiving lines, which actually our chunk size is going to match the um, the line of the file. You can specify as well the end of line delimiter, which you could be using different for different systems and different delimiters, but it's, it comes really handy when you want, when you want to tokenize a simple um, file. And so now, the moment of truth, we are going to show you one example. Um, this example is how to parse Wikipedia. So this code in here, fairly simple, um, it's using streams to read the XML files from Wikipedia. You know, like if you go to the um, settings page or the help page on Wikipedia, you can download the f even the full website, the full Wikipedia in XML, um, describing all the um, pages. So what happens is, I have a file here. I have a file exactly in here. There you go. If you can read, um, I'm sure you can, let me You can see in here that this file is 606 megabytes. I have used a simplified one because um, we, we really don't want um, to process the full Wikipedia right now in this example because it's like something like 120 gigabytes of data. So I'm going to show you exactly what this program does. The only thing it does is count the number, the number of pages on um, the Wikipedia dump. So let me reconfigure this a bit. So now we're going to run it. To start, sorry. Uh, one second. So the idea here is that we are going to see. Um, I just refresh the monitoring for the um, for the applications in Node.js, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick in this program. This program, which what it does is parses the XML, and you are going to see how the memory keeps steady. So there you go. Um, the CPU goes to the roof because, as Matteo said before, the stream is handling the back pressure, and what is happening now is it's going as fast as it can because there is nothing interfering, and the reader can read as fast as the writer. And then um, I have to say I don't have a solid state disk, so it will take around 20 seconds, 19 seconds, which is fairly good for parsing a 600 megabytes, um, 600 megabyte XML file, and the count of pages is 22,350 itself. So the, the higher that our memory went was 72 megabytes. You can see the benefits of having something like that in a production system where the memory and the resources of the hardware it's always a big problem, so there you go. Mateo, it's your time now. There is uh, one more thing to say about memory um, while yes. you're moving the, the, the thing. Um, the, when you're moving, um, when you're building a system on um, using, uh, when you're building a system with a garbage collection, uh, in fact, the, the thing that you, you're going to do um, you're going to collect. When you locate objects, you're also going to collect them. And by allocating a lot of memory, like 800 megabytes, a gigabyte, you will create a lot of pressure on the garbage collector, which is Correct. going to be executed on your CPU as well, and in fact, will slow you down. 
So keeping the memory usage low, in fact, make your, your code go fast. Actually, I'm going to show you exactly what Matteo is telling, because um, I think I have the example right here. So you can see uh, now we are back to where we were. So this is the first example we saw in this presentation. Um, this is the same version using streams and the other the same program using not streams and uh, yes, using written the full file. Remember that huge URL. So what is happening here, the memory footprint, once they finish, it's going to be enormous for the non-streams version, whereas the memory footprint for the streams is going to be very low and then the garbage collector is going to have not really too much pressure. So, Matteo, it's your time now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, you can see that the why not streams is still running. Yeah, and it's very, very yeah, slow. Now it's finished. The other one so. fish, finished earlier. Anyway, uh, let's go back to our slides before we are, really run, we are really running out of time, so don't worry. We are happy. Um, so uh, you should be seeing right now uh, a nice slide about the future of stream and user land model. So the big question is, will be a stream for? Uh, big question. I don't know. There's no plan in doing it right now. We have some problems in Node.js, in Node Core, on how we should, that we should improve. First of all is error handling. The fact that in order to properly pipe streams and avoid uh, memory, leaking in, memory leaks in a proper way, you need to rely on a, a user land module is not really something we want. So we will probably tackle that problem at some point. Also, there is a destroy issue, which some part of core has it, not all core has it, some uh, user land module has it, it's definitely not standard. What does it do? We don't know. So we want to standardize the user destroy. And we want to also probably add flush to write stream. So if you want to help with streams, please come up. We have a lot of stuff that we, can, we need help on. So if you want to help, just go to the um, readable stream issue tracker, open an issue, ask, how I can help, or reach out on the uh, Node.js um, uh, ERC channel. So we have also been working on test, testing regressions and avoiding that we a single change of stream can break half of user land because most of Node.js is based on stream streams. So uh, there is also a pull request adding the deco automatic decoding string for writable. I don't know if you know decoding and encoding. If you are into encodings. That's a big deal for you. Also, there is uh, other versions of Node.js dependent on some internal API of Eventimeter, which is not being, it won't be used anymore in the new versions of the streams. Also, they're probably coming, HTTP is probably, HTTP2 is probably coming into core, which means that you will get a proper stream multiplexer implemented into, uh, into core. This is a big deal, and if you don't know how HTTP2 will, can help your application, you should have a look. That's a big deal. Um, also, if you want to help, there is also migrating all modules to Stream 3 APIs. Um, also, you've seen a lot of modules with a 2 at the end. So that means that they have you targeting version 2 of the specification. Now, most modules that have a 2 at the end have been ported to version 3 of the specification, and they kept the 2 at the very end of it. That's node man. So uh, also, there's a lot of innovation being happening in user land, and in fact, um, uh, in the peer-to-peer -peer community, for example, there's a discovery swarm. Uh, uh, the discovery swarm uh, module that you can try. Uh, also, there are all a torrent. If you are into the um, torrent, there is a lot of uh, torrent uh, modules that you can use. There is also a lot of activity in the multiplexing streams over a single stream, also in streaming protocol parsers. There is also an alternative implementation of streams called pool streams, which, which is really, really cool. Uh, and again, use flash fry stream and also split two because, you know, I need to make ramp up my download count, so please use split two as well. Uh, now it's time, we have finished it. Thank you for watching this. It's time for questions. Let's see the questions. So uh, there's a nice question about what is high watermark for. Yes. So um, high watermark is for um, 
uh, I2 Ultramar is for controlling the, the, the size of the buffer between two uh, um, between two streams. If you've seen, if you can still see my slides, uh, I'm going back to this nice uh, screenshot. So, what is height watermark? Height watermark is this part of the buffer. So, basically, it will tell you, well, I can tolerate some more data uh, batching up before being processed up to a certain level. That level is height watermark, and this is it. This is height watermark. In fact, next version of this thing, it will have a high watermark thing written here. So, that will be helpful. Uh, I hope the question, the thing, is, the answer is clear. Uh, but if if not, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, yes, perfect. That is clear. Great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have still some more questions around. Uh, we we have a question from the very beginning. Uh, is data direction flow a factor to consider for type of streams? Uh, yes, of course, as we have seen, uh, data flows from readable to writable. And we can move data um, and through transform streams. I hope this answered your questions, but again, reach out and we can go through it again. So, uh, so, uh, there is another question about a specific problem that they had in uh, uh, Adrian had in production. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, you should probably reach out to us uh, via email or Twitter because the answer is probably big. So you should probably uh, let's chat about afterwards. Okay, sorry Adrian, but that's a big uh, that's a big questions. Uh, um, yeah, don't forget that we have a hashtag, which is Ask Nerfor. If you have any question on Twitter, uh, you just can use this hashtag, and then we will look after you um, and your problem. So, so um, there's a nice, uh, then there's a nice last, there's a nice uh, another nice questions. So, um, uh, for a web application where the response size is small, is the overhead of using uh, streams worth it? So, the answer is, the whole HTTP API is always based on streams. It's all based on stream, okay? So you're using streams because the requests, HTTP requests and HTTP response in Node are streams. Which means, well, you're using streams anyway. Now, the question should be, if I got it correctly, should I produce my data in a streaming way, if my response is more, if my request is, uh, if my response is more, the answer it um, it depends. It's not about how much data you are moving. It's about um, how long it's taking. Does it take to produce that data? If if you can produce that data in a streaming fashion and uh, it takes a uh, it takes a while to um, produce the, each chunk then it's probably very worth it because um, if, if you do it that way you can um, uh, you can uh, avoid having a single uh, you can avoid accumulating a lot of data in your CPU and doing a lot of CPU processing before waiting uh, to uh, um, before waiting uh, you can do a lot of processing and before receiving new I.O. events. I don't know if all of this is clear, but let's go back on Twitter and ask it again if it's not. Um, yeah, also don't forget that uh, the streams provide a well-known API and interfaces that everybody knows and is kind of a de facto standard for handling data around. So it's probably worth to at least consider them before jumping into the deep. But yeah, definitely, if what Matteo saying, it makes a lot of sense. So. so um, I think we have time for one last question. Uh, what do you think, David? Yes, we do. I think so. So, um, uh, what are the common pitfalls of using streams? And this is a very nice question. Uh, I think uh, the most common pitfall really is broken error handling. And broken error handling it's, um, is what usually 
creates more problem for people because yeah. you can uh, leak file descriptor very easily. What happens when you leak a file descriptor is that uh, you might end up being unable to even SSH in into your box because that is a file descriptor as well. So you might end up being, oh no, I can't log in here. Ouch, you have a problem. So um, that's amazing, that's the, the biggest problem. The other common bit of all that I've seen is always reverting to use the on data event handler. So if you are implementing a pipeline of data processing, you should use pipe. Or at the very least, readable and read. Please do it. Uh, that's the second big mistake that I've seen done. Always people that still use on, on data, and that is not okay. Yeah, there is another question here that I would like to ask where um, how does the streams compare to queues? Um, actually, the stream could be the end of the beginning of a queue. So the queue itself is a transport mechanism, whereas the stream is an abstraction around reading from a transport mechanism, which could be a file, a queue, or an HTTP server, or you know anything that can be network-bound or system-bound. Um, does that make sense, Gabriel? I don't think you can answer, so... I, yeah, <laughs> probably. In the chat, maybe. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> so, um, I hope this is clear. If you want, if you want a, a queue implementation which is really fast, you can go and use fast queue. Yeah. Fast queue as the letter. It's really fast, and it provides you a nice queue implementation that you can use. Um, so, uh, I think uh, it's it's time to, to close and wrap up. So, yeah, I think uh, so. Um, oh, sorry, guys. So, thank you, guys. Please reach out to uh, me on Twitter, to David on Twitter, to Nier from on Twitter, and um, also via email uh, if you need anything. We, I remember you that we are a consultancy company, so we can help you uh, uh, in your Node.js project either by doing an architectural review, node support, support if you have any bugs in production or in development, and we offer support over all your all the open source modules that you are, um, you are using. Uh, we are also um, performance experts, so if you have any performance need, you can uh, have a go there. We can help you. We have a lot of tools. We have some nice presentation that if you want, you can ping us if you need any details, any pointers on performance work, we can give them to you. And I think that's it. Thank you, David. Thank you very much, Matteo. And uh, goodbye, folks. Thank you for, um, for watching this and staying with us for an hour. Almost. We are very late, so I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I knew it was coming. Streams are very complicated subject. Yeah, uh, it's not easy. Again, thank you very much, folks, and see you next time. See you, bye-bye.